new gas plant and upgrade the pipeline to feed it. See what it would cost you to lend your ratepayers pre-qualified. So you've got to have a south-facing south roof. You've got to have good credit. Um, it helps if you're in a low-income bracket because we want to help more people for Georgia Power. Uh, do that, and then do the math on what would be more cost-effective. If you loan people the money to put a solar system, a photovoltaic system, on their homes or businesses, and pay you back out of their savings on their electric bills, no operations and maintenance, no environmental issues, no permitting, no nothing. Let, let the great payer absorb all that on whose house it was. See if that wouldn't come out to be more cost-effective than building any kind of new utility-scale generating plant. And lo and behold, just last month, the Clean Power Research Group did a study, or completed a study, looking at seven metropolitan areas in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And, and you're familiar with Pittsburgh, Scranton, Philadelphia, big, big places. And there, uh, this is a 68-page report. Please Google this if you're interested. Uh, I pulled one slide out of the whole thing because I thought this said it all. This is showing how they calculate avoided cost and what is truly figured into burning natural gas or generating solar energy. And on average, distributed solar was $300 per megawatt hour less than natural gas at today's price. Think about that, because right now everybody is saying natural gas is God's gift to energy. It's like, you know, forget about fracking and all the other third party pushes. This is the way to go, but guess what? It's still a fossil fuel. It's still subject to price volatility. It still has huge environmental issues attached to it. So this is what I like to see going out there. Let's look at something that has no environmental downside. Solar, whether it's utility scale or distributed, if there's a spill, it's just a nice day. No problem. 